Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview UNCG's baseball head coach, Billy. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Brandon. Can you talk about how you got your start in baseball? Uh, yeah, I mean, I played, you know, as a youngster, little league, high school. I uh, was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to go to Atlantic Christian, play there. Um, for four years, was team captain, and uh, – Got out and decided that uh, I wanted to coach and give back. Um, you know, somebody helped me along the way. So I started a coaching career now, and it's going into probably about its 35th year. Where are some places that you've coached before at? Um, well, I mean, I started at Enfield Academy, right outside of Rocky Mountain, a small private school. I was the AD. Moved to North Carolina Wesleyan um, for two years, worked with Mike Fox, who's the head coach at UNC. Then I worked, uh, I worked uh, back at Enfield Academy uh, for six years as the head coach. Went to Cary Academy, started that athletic program as the athletic director and uh, head baseball coach. Got the good fortune of going to Lewisburg, taking over for Russ Frazier, who's a legend, for six years. And uh, then uh, got the opportunity to go to East Carolina as an assistant. Later moved into the head coaching role for nine years. Last five years, I've worked with the Yankees, and last August, I took the job at UNC Greensboro. So that wraps it up about as, about as good as I can wrap it up. Can you talk about your experience being the athletic director for the Cary Academic Academy? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean um, um, yeah, it, was a, it, was a, it was a great experience. We opened the school. The school wasn't even built uh, right there off Harrison Avenue. Uh, just finishing when we moved in. Um, and started, uh, I think it was 17 sports with about 34 teams from middle school to high school. Um, great resources with Jim Knight being behind that, uh, SAS Institute. But a tremendous opportunity for me as a young uh, coach administrator to have that opportunity to start a program from scratch. Can you talk about your experience being the ECU baseball coach? Yeah, well, I mean, Great, great run at East Carolina. I coached some uh, tremendous young men. Uh, got a chance to work for what I think is one of the best athletic directors in the country in Terry Holland. Um, and we had a good run. Super regional in, in 09. Uh, went to five NCAA regionals. Never had a losing season. And I walked away with some great experiences and, and, and had the opportunity to coach some tremendous kids uh, in my nine years there. So it was a very, very uh, rewarding experience for me. Can you talk about your achievements being named the NC North Carolina Baseball Coach Association? Well, I, I guess I won it twice, once as a high school coach after my 914 at Enfield Academy, went 24 and one and won a state championship. And then I, I don't know the other year in college, maybe it was 207. Uh, 07, yes, after we had a good year and got back to a regional and and also won at No. 2 at Lewisburg after I took our team to Grand Junction, Colorado, in Division uh, One Junior College World Series. How was that experience like? Uh, the Grand Junction? Yes. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I say this to everybody. I, I never got a chance to go to Omaha uh, as a coach or player, but Grand Junction had to be the purest form of it. It was packed out every night, you know, eight to 12,000 people. Um, it was just a tremendous community and the town got behind you. And our guys played well out there. And, you know, unfortunately, the no team's happy when you get to a situation like that. But I was really proud of that run that that, that uh, 02 team made. And I had some great lifetime friends and experiences from that team. Can you talk about your experience working with the New York Yankees? Yeah. Um, you know, after East Carolina, I had an opportunity to uh, interview with the Yankees. And, uh, Really liked Damon Oppenheimer, who's the scouting director, and uh, uh, actually took the area scouting job. So I worked uh, the Carolinas uh, uh, for five years. So I did five drafts for the Yankees to be in the draft room on draft days. We just had the MLB draft. is a pretty surreal experience, for, especially in there with that NY. Um, so we, we were, had the opportunity to draft some tremendous people. Uh, I felt like I contributed to a small part. Um, I think we took about 15 kids over five years. Uh, and I think 14 of them are still playing 
uh, either in the system or were traded and are still playing minor league baseball. So um, it was a tremendous experience. Everything you hear about the Yankees is true. Uh, but the biggest thing I have to emphasize is not about the Yankees and New York. It, it's about the people. And Damon Oppenheimer and Brian Barber and Tim Kelly and the other people I was associated with were just tremendous uh, people in a time that I did some, stepped out, did something different in coaching and was able to grow as a, as a professional. Can you talk about the experience getting play, getting prepared for the MLB draft and how what the process is like? It's a, I mean, you know, on, typically it's uh, in this area, North Carolina and South Carolina, we had 28 Division One schools. And then you're responsible for all the high school kids. So it can be, I mean, I think total with all the colleges, we had 78 colleges. So your job is if there's a prospect at any one of those colleges or in high school, you have to scout. So, I, you know, at the end of the day, it would be between 50 and 75 names you would have turned in for the draft. So with that, you've got to have all their bio, uh, you know, information, medical information, you know, date of birth, height, weight. Uh, it's almost like you become a little bit of a private detective. You have to do makeup assessments on each player. You know, you got to know a little bit about what makes them tick. Um, and then uh, at the same token, you got to go and evaluate their abilities on the field. So. Um, that experience, because of the volume we had in the Carolinas, it, it, it keeps you busy. That, that's for sure. So uh, something that I, I, I truly enjoyed and, um, you know, it uh, quite honestly, uh, missed that, uh, the relationships I built and the ability to go out and evaluate players uh, on the professional level. Can you talk about your experience so far being the new UNCG's baseball head coach? Yeah, I mean, I just took over as a kind of a weird year for us, as you know, um, you know, with the pandemic and COVID-19. Uh, but I got the job last August. I uh, always felt like I coached for 30 years. Uh, started in back in um, 86 with coaching a Babe Ruth team. And I, I scouted for five. I always felt like I was a coach. I felt like I got into coaching because I could make an impact with young men. So when this job opened, I mean, it was attractive to me because Link Jarrett, my former recruiting coordinator, uh, was here. And he, um, you know, he had great things to say about Kim Record and administration. And, you know, I had a two-day interview and my visit went really well. I walked away with very, with really no negatives uh, about the position. Great facility, great town, uh, com good conference. So, uh, you know, took, took the job. Uh, brought in a staff. Uh, it, it's been fun. It's been fun. I mean, I, I'm looking to build on, maintain what Coach Jared established here and, and looking to hopefully take this thing to another level. What do you plan to accomplish as the UNCG's um, baseball new head coach? Well, I mean, certainly, I mean, your goal is, you know, you want to win championships. I mean, you, but you want to do it the right way. I think that's something I talk about a lot, um, you know, about uh, you know, the, the – just the, the key components of loyalty, trust, work ethic, commitment are all things I want to be, our program to be about. And um, I, I mean, our goal is to win championships. We want to, be, we want to be the best team in the SOCON. That's a goal. It's a good league. Uh, it's not easy to win as people think. Other teams are trying to win too. Um, so, uh, you know, and then, and then, you know, if you're, if you're fortunate enough to win the Southern Conference, I mean, you get an opportunity to go to the NCAA tournament. Um, so our goal is to, is to get in a regional. I've had the good fortune of, of being in five NCAA regionals and a super regional. So that's not going to be uncommon ground for me. Greg Starbuck is a assistant. Uh, we were able to track away from Clemson. He was at Elon and went to a, a lot of regionals there and went to regionals at Clemson. So we have a staff that is poised to, you know, hopefully take this thing to another level. Can you talk about what you're looking in as a recruit for a high school player? Oh, that's, I get asked that a lot, uh, Brandon. Um, and, and I guess the, the, the biggest thing um, is, uh, you know, it depends on the position. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, there's certain things you look for. And I look for movements with pitchers, and I'm the pitching coach here. Um, and, you know, their main thing I look at is their ability to command the ball, throw strikes, attack the zone, their delivery. 
Uh, infielders, I mean, you build your team up. I mean, positionally, you build your team up the middle is catching. You know, we want to recruit shortstops. We feel like they can play everywhere in the infield and in center field. So uh, those guys need to be athletic. I mean, they need to be athletic and they be able to handle their position and be able to run. And uh, but the biggest thing is we, we want athletes positionally. We want guys that are just not your big, uh, brony first baseman that sits up there and mashes. That'd be great to have. Can't have too many of those guys. We want athletes, and athletes are going to help us uh, get this thing going on. How has the recruitment process been like during the coronavirus? Have you had it to change a lot of things? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did a Zoom call the other day uh, with, um, you know, recruit uh, my coaches and his family. Uh, that's something I never thought I would do. Um, and uh, it's been good. It's actually been good. We, we, we were able to finish our, our 2021 recruiting class and, and tie that up in a bow. Um, and things are constantly changing during this with roster limit, scholarship, seniors can come back. And um, then, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is we were, uh, you know, able to start and actually get a commitment from a, a, a 21 graduate. Uh, during this time. So it's gone actually pretty good. It's just time for us now to, you know, as this things people start to back up for us to get out uh, and start recruiting again, which right now we're, we're kind of in jail a little bit here till uh, July 31st, um, which is if the, if the NCAA doesn't move that back, we can go out August 1st. But, you know, I think they're going to vote on that sometime here in the next, you know, several weeks. Um, on, on how college baseball is going to move forward. Do you see in the future you using more Zoom calls as a method of recruitment? I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I'm an in-person per. It, it's certainly been a good tool. It's been something neat to learn. Um, you know, getting kids to camp, meeting with their families, being face to face is a critical part of recruiting. We can't ever uh, replace. I mean, I think the pandemic has forced us into this. Um, um, certainly, we know it's an avenue. Um, it's something that we can do. But uh, I, I think the way we were doing it wasn't broke. Um, you know, as we go back, we just got to be smart and, and follow the guidelines and do things. But getting recruits on our campus, getting them in front of us, selling what we have to tell at UNC Greensboro is important. And it's tough to do that on a Zoom call. Um, so um, that, that's kind of that's my thoughts on that. What advice would you give upcoming – college coaches looking to get into the profession? Sure. Um, be ready to work. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think I, I would just go back to how I evaluate my coaches and people around me is, you know, are you loyal? Uh, uh, you know, do you work? And what is your knowledge? And I, I caution young coaches that please don't be a know-it-all let the loyalty and the knowledge be first. Be loyal to who you're working for. Um, work your rear end off. And then, you know, as, if you do those two things, knowledge comes. But if you walk into a situation thinking you know it all, uh, you, it's probably a big turnoff. It, it is for me. Uh, I, like, I, I learn every day. I, I'm constantly growing in this game and trying to find ways to help my kids become better players. So I'm, I'm not a know-it-all. And, and I, I think that's the biggest thing, I think, with the younger generation is remember loyalty is important, work, work, work hard, and uh, if you do those two things, knowledge comes. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Uh, I, I'm, I have social media. I'm not a big uh, uh, tweeter or Twitter. I don't, I, I don't tweet a whole lot. Uh, I have Facebook. Um, I don't even know the address, to be totally honest with you. I usually use it more for resources and to share and retweet things associated with our program. Um, I leave that for the younger generation, my assistants. And uh, my wife, she's tremendous with stuff like that. So, uh, But I'm out there. I'm on it. Um, uh, I'm, just, I'm just not the guy that's going to give you the quote of the day every day. <laughs> Where can my listeners find UNCG's baseball social media app yeah it would be uh you just go to uh you know UNC baseball and or unc athletics um and uh if you just push that in on twitter or uh, facebook it should pop up uh our, our marketing people and, and sports information people do a tremendous job uh, 
uh, with that. And uh, so that, that they do. And it, as I get those things and I see those things on social media, I'm constantly retweeting them, sending them out and, uh, you know, just, just sharing the good news. Okay. About what's going on. Thank you again, Coach Godwin, for your interview. And you can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Godwin, for your interview. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Good luck to you, buddy. You too.